Hey YouTube, 3D Printed Life here, and today I am bringing you the last video of my Cubed 2 Up. Now, this is going to be a review, it's not going to be a super in-depth review, it's not going to be a super high quality review, but hopefully you'll get some good information if you are considering purchasing a 1 or a 2 Up anytime in the near future. Now, first of all, um, basic stuff, the price availability and specs. The 1UP has a 4 inch by 4 inch by 5 inch height build area and costs $199 plus shipping. The 2UP costs $279 and it is a 7 inch by 7 inch by 5 inch, so same height. Um, and yeah, like I said, $279. Um, both of these, the Kickstarter campaigns are just about finalized. They have one more batch to ship out, uh, which I believe they started, so they should start doing... Uh, pre-orders from their website soon. So if you were to order it now in um, the middle of June, I would say you should expect to wait uh, possibly two to three months to get your printer. Uh, maybe sooner because I don't know how many people ordered it after the Kickstarter campaign ended. Um, but you can always ask them and then I would add about a month to whatever they estimate. Um, so when you get this, it is not assembled, it is a kit. But the good news is, it is very easy to assemble. There are some awesome instructions posted by Jeep Guy online, which you can download. They are um, t uh, like models, pieces that um, are shown pictures, and it shows really well exactly how everything goes together. In my opinion, it was actually better than video instructions because um, you don't have to keep pausing the video and trying to find your spot or trying to figure out what's going on. Um, so it takes probably about three to four hours to put together if you have some experience or knowledge of 3D printers and um, have read the instructions beforehand, at least briefly. If you don't have much knowledge, it'll probably expect to take it about six hours to assemble. Uh, connecting the computer is a little difficult at first, getting all the drivers right, but I do have a video, which I will try to remember to link below, to help you guys out if you are looking at it. Um, just a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Um, so, let's get right into the print quality. Um, you, this printer, uh, they claim it's capable of printing down to 50 microns, but personally I've never found a use for going that high resolution. The majority of the time I print at 0.2 millimeter layer resolution. And here's some of the prints I get. This one, um, I believe this was 0.2 with Matter Hackers filament. Came out pretty nice. Um, again, 0.2. And now, one thing to point out is that because this Y bed, the rods are attached to the bed and the bearing is attached to the base down in there, there's a bit of wobble in this direction. It's probably hard to see on video, but as a result, and because this motor is mounted on one end, when this moves and stops, this side of the bed actually wiggles a little bit, and those ripples show up in prints, like there. And actually, yeah, yeah, that is it, because this piece printed on its side separately. Um, yeah, so that's really the main thing. It kind of ripples whenever it comes around a corner. Now, you can greatly reduce this, if not eliminate it, by A, printing slower, or B, uh, using super glue on the ends of the rods, on all four ends, and on the bearings down in there to hold everything in place nice and rigidly. Um, <clears throat> and doing that definitely improves quality. And um, also, this isn't really a problem on circular things, although sometimes they might come out more like ellipses rather than circles just because of that. Um, now, this is from personal experience because I did not glue down the ends of the rods. I did glue down the bearings, but not the rods. So this is pretty rigid, but not as rigid as it could be, so print quality could definitely be improved. Um, printing at 0.1 millimeter resolution is really, really nice. This year, um, actually, I believe this was 0.2. This came out nice. Um, some of the 0.1 prints are like this octopus guy. Um, again, there's a little bit of the ripple you can see, but the the skin is really smooth and um, tiny bit of banding, but it's not bad at all. Um, overall, for more functional things rather than pretty looking things. I've been getting some really, really amazing prints out of this guy, and I mean, that's how I'm building my own printer, is completely with printing parts from this guy. So they come out uh, pretty accurate, and like I said, they may not look all the best all the time, 
but if you do put enough work into it, you can get some really high quality prints, much higher quality than I've been getting um, if you really put some time into it. Um, so, the printing itself, I usually print at about 60 millimeters per second on it. Uh, they claim to be able to print at 100 millimeters per second, uh, but I found that really you can only do that if you're printing a large container that's something just like a, a single layer circle, circular wall. Then you can print at faster speeds, but um, that's really not practical and it's not like an everyday situation. Now for the quality of the printer itself, not the prints, um, it is decent, it's not bad, but do keep in mind that this is a very, very cheap printer. Uh, this right here, the, the main frame is made out of 5mm thick MDF, medium density fiberboard, um, but it's not plain, left plain like on the uh, printer boards. It's actually coated in a black melamine coating. Um, melamine is similar to what you'd find on whiteboards. Although, in this case, because it is surfaced on wood and it's not super thick, it's not going to be super smooth and glossy like on a whiteboard. But it does give a nice finish, and it does certainly look a lot better than unfinished wood. Um, some of the connections are press fit like this, so as a result, they aren't always as tight as you'd hope. But for the most part, stuff is held together by screws. It's really just this main base piece that is um, held together by press fittings. You'll notice here that I actually do not have the stock gantry on it. I have my own printed gantry. And the reason that I'm reviewing it with this printed thing is because you have a 3D printer. So you can print upgrades for it very, very easily. A uh, thing to point out is that it should be printable out of the box. Some people have had issues with this Y drive. I personally did. My friend who got this one did. Um, but you can still print with it um, when this is like kind of wobbly and not secure just enough to be able to print out your own replacements. But, I mean, essentially, uh, you can print out replacements for pretty much any part on here. As you can see, I have a custom extruder, I have a custom gantry, I have a custom Y drive, I have little nut holders, I have custom feet. Most of the stuff is stuff I designed other than the gantry and this Y drive. Um, but it's all on Thingiverse. Um, custom coupler, too, which I designed. It's all on Thingiverse, it's all to download, and it really does improve the quality of your prints quite a bit. So let's talk about some issues, at least issues out of the box. Um, first of all, the main issue um, is going to be your, the Y drive. For many people, it's a little bit wobbly unless you grind down the ends of these screws. The reason being is because the stock uh, version doesn't have screw mounts like this which go through to the stepper motor. It just uses these two big screws to mount it. And screwing into MDF is not the most stable. Uh, secondly, gantry sag. This is something that's really hard to fix unless you do the pulley mod, which essentially uh, has a string that starts here, goes down around a pulley, up around the top, and then down and hooks onto here. And what that does is it actually pulls up the other side uh, in the same speed as this side is moving. So it'll keep everything nice and level for the entire motion. And that's a pretty... Um, Easy fix, I guess you could say, just requires buying some extra parts or modeling some of, your, of uh, pulleys yourself. <clears throat> and the final thing, like I mentioned before, is this little Y shake that will cause ripples if you don't um, turn down your speed or increase the rigidity. Now, some things to mention before you buy this. Do expect to put quite a lot of time into this printer because it's cheap. Uh, it does require a bit more tinkering with to get the quality right. It does require some more uh, printing parts on your own, like these guys, in order to get everything working really nicely for you. Also, um, when it is printing, it isn't quite the quietest printer ever. Um, I, a lot of people seem to have better results than I have, but my printer was especially loud. I believe it's because the frame here is loose. I don't understand why it is, but... Even with these dampening feet, um, it is a rather loud printer, and that's actually one of my main inspirations for building a new one, is so that it's quieter and it can print faster. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go down to the final part, recommendations. Would I recommend this printer? Well, yes and no. It depends who you are and how much free time you have. If you're the kind of person who likes modeling, um, things, but you just want to print them out. You don't want to worry about 
any of the hassle. Um, well, first of all, you're going to need about a thousand bucks, and then um, second of all, definitely buy a different printer. I would recommend buying a pre-made one and something that is mostly, if not all, metal. If you do have a bit more free time, you don't mind um, printing out upgrades, you don't mind tinkering, definitely get this printer. It has a bit of a learning curve, but once you get it, it's really worth it. And uh, what you learn is really quite valuable in the world of 3D printing. Because this printer is so raw, because it doesn't have end stops or anything like that, you learn basically everything about the printer. And as a result, any printer that you get or build after this, um, you'll know much more about to begin with, and you'll have much better results when using it. So it really is a, a trade-off, so you do have to kind of decide which path you want to go on. But as far as cheap 3D printers go, this is great. I would probably almost certainly recommend this over the PrinterBot Junior, whichever the tiny one is. Um, just because um, the Junior is a rather flimsy layout, not the Junior, it's a simple. The Junior is the bigger one. Um, the one where it has the, the, the cheapest one with the smallest build area. Um, I would recommend this over that printer bot, uh, just because this design, while it is a little bit funky with this single screw and the, the sag, um, it is overall a more rigid and more complete looking design. Um, however, if you do have more money, um, definitely go with a more expensive printer. Basically, you get what you pay for. So, if all you can afford is a $200 or a $280 printer, this is great. There are really not many other alternatives, and there are not many. Um, the alternatives that there are are not really any better. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions about this printer um, in specific or 3D printing in general, feel free to ask below, and I or somebody else will probably answer you pretty quickly. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you later.